The Samsung Galaxy S24 FE is here and you can pre-order it. Links in the description if you're, if you're interested. But it's a really interesting and kind of weird phone to me. And some of the decisions don't make sense, but that's Samsung. So yeah, it's a new phone. They made some upgrades. They got a couple extra things they added this year. We got a 6.7 inch screen instead of a 6.4 inch screen. And we've got the new Exynos 2400E which is weird because if you get the international version of the S24, S24 Ultra, it has the Exynos 2400, but they came out with this new Exynos 2400E. And I'm maybe it's the exact same chip and they just clocked it less and they're branding it that way. But the only fundamental difference I can find online is they clocked it 0.1 gigahertz slower. So instead of being like 3.2 gigahertz, it's 3.1 gigahertz. Okay. 650 bucks, which I think is not the most terrible price in the world considering the mid-range phones we have now. And 128 gigabytes of storage, eight gigs of RAM. It basically has the same cameras as last year, which weren't particularly that good. So they're still not particularly all that great this year, but they're capable. They'll take your photos for you. Three times telephoto, 50 megapixel, all that stuff. And it's kind of interesting because Samsung has been doing this thing for the last couple of years where they keep regurgitating basically the same cameras. And maybe it's these companies way of telling us that like we're just kind of there right <laughs> there's not a whole lot of extra movement we can do so they're relying heavily on computational photography image signal processors and things like that to use software to make the photos look better and i don't know we'll have to see whenever it gets here but there i guess samsung has fomo this fall so they released all of a sudden under like the dead of night the, we woke up and all of a sudden we had the new Samsung Galaxy Watch FE, we had the new Samsung Galaxy S24 FE, and the Tab S10 Plus and S10 Ultra. I talked about that yesterday because I really don't feel like they're that much of an upgrade, but this is weird. So they're kind of trying to pull a Google. So when you look at like the Google Pixel 9, and it's got the Tensor 4 in it, just like the Pixel 9 Pro does, well, when you take a look in the Exynos world, you got the Exynos 2400 and the S24 Ultra. They dialed it down 100 megahertz. <laughs> they took 100 megahertz and they skimmed it right off the top, threw it in there, said, all right, it's good. And they also made a couple other upgrades. So it has a, a, like a slightly bigger screen, 6.7 instead of 6.4. And it has Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. And it also has reverse wireless charging this year, still limited to 25 watt charging, which is kind of weird to me. But yeah, otherwise there's not a whole lot of crazy different upgrades that they did to it. And I wouldn't expect that. Samsung really just hasn't been pushing the envelope lately with a lot of this stuff, but they didn't go to MediaTek, which is weird. So this year has been super weird with Samsung with their chips. So last year they had the, Sam the Snapdragon for everybody with the S23 series phones. Everybody got the Snapdragon 8 generation two. And then this year in the United States, in certain markets, you have the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3, but then you've got the Exynos 2400, which by and large has been pretty good. It's an interesting chip. It's a 10 core chip, not an eight, not a six, not a nine. It's a 10 core chip, which is pretty crazy. And the benchmarks are okay, but the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3 is still a little bit better for gaming. And I think it's gonna be better optimized, maybe a little bit better in the heat department. And they did increase the thermal management, bigger heat sink basically, uh, I think it's heat sink or vapor chamber or whatever. One of those. They added extra heat management to the S24 FE this year, which is also something that should be noted. So, yeah, interesting stuff, right? 1080p. It's got an AMOLED, AMOLED display. It's got 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, and it's something that's probably going to be a pretty decent, pretty decent phone. And you can get up to $400 trading credit through Samsung if you trade in like an S23, which I wouldn't trade in an S23 for an S24 FE any day of the week. But if you trade in an S23, you get 400 bucks, but they're giving, if you trade in an S23 FE from last year to go to the S24 FE this year, they're also giving you 400 bucks. It's gonna be available on October the 3rd. And let me tell you real quick, I've got it pulled up for the colors. They have uh, blue, gray, green, and black. It's like graphite color is what it is. but. Yeah, interesting stuff that they've got going on there. And also you can get the Galaxy Buds FE. You can get up to 50% off if you order one through Samsung. You get those for $50. And you can even get the Galaxy Watch FE for 100 bucks. So if you buy an S24 FE and you get those, you can outfit yourself with all those cool FE things. FE stands for Fan Edition, by the way. And get yourself all that stuff out the door for basically the same price of like an S24 Plus. 
So from like an ecosphere and get yourself all the things kind of perspective, it's really not that bad. But it really is interesting to me. And they bounce around with this stuff too. Like remember the S20 was the S21 FE came out right before the S23, but then the S23 FE came out last fall, October, and now the S24 FE is in, in September. Uh, there's been kind of some shuffling and changing of the guard when it comes to phones this year, like with the Pixel launching two months early. So they're kind of, I guess, want to put themselves in a position where they can kind of maybe undercut some of the sales. Because if you take a look at the S24 FE at 650 and then all those different options they have, and then you have the 799 Pixel 9, which is expensive, right? The Pixel 9, they did bump the price up, went from 699 to 799 and the Pixel 9 used to be the, like, well, the Pixel series used to be the standalone, like, underhanded cut the legs out from under people with value because they were like 500, 600 bucks. Now they're charging you full price. I mean, basically, Apple and Google, same price. Like, Google expects that their phone, I guess, should sell the same, which I don't know if anyone's told them they're not Apple, <laughs> but uh, they're not. So it, I think it's a harder sell for basically 800 bucks for a Pixel 9. So, I think this is smart on Samsung's part because they've thrown another phone out there, a little bit lower price point. And I mean, there are some compromises, right? I mean, it's not it's not a perfect phone. I mean, it, it has a lot of nice things going for it, and it's something that I think you can enjoy, but it's not fully to the max. So, like, I don't really agree with them calling it Fan Edition. They should just call it, like, the... I don't know, economy edition. It's like an economy flagship. You're not getting the Snapdragon. You're not getting exactly the same chip as the S24, but it's right there. They just clocked it down 100 hertz, eight gigs of RAM. You're gonna get some capable cameras, which aren't quite the best. You're gonna get charging options, which are there, but not you know quite the fastest. It's not really the best in any area, but it is something that we're so powerful with these phones now. Any phone that's got over a three gigahertz processor is gonna do anything that you need it to do, and it's gonna do it pretty well and also AI. And I think this is a good way to kind of slide this into the radar because Apple, with their Apple intelligence, well, it's kind of in dunce mode right now. It's sitting in the corner. It doesn't have any intelligence yet. We're still waiting for iOS 18.1 to come out, and then these bad boys can finally get Apple intelligence, which the first round of Apple intelligence is basically poached stuff they bought from Google. So when you look at the S24 FE and you can get like the circle to search, you can get the interpreter mode, you can get all these other different things that's already very well optimized and they've been pushing these out to other phones, I think it really kind of puts them in the lead, especially in a lot of different areas when it comes to the AI. Like Samsung and Galaxy AI has been doing really good. And then of course, seven years of software updates, seven years of security patches. So yeah, it may be the best value proposition Samsung we've seen in a while, but maybe you shouldn't buy it just yet. And here's the thing. So historically, they priced the FE phones a little bit higher than people are usually willing to pay for them with decent trade-in deals, attractive offers they have right here. But then when you get to the fall, like once we, oh, it's fall now, unless you're in Houston, because uh, we certainly didn't get the memo. It's still in the 90s here. It's hot. I'm tired of it. But uh, elsewhere in the United States, it is probably nicer. Uh, so you take a look at the prices. They are very aggressive with the sales on these things. So when you take a look at like Black Friday, Christmas shopping time, or especially right as we get into January before the S25 series comes out, you're going to see some, and I'm just don't quote me on this, I can't guarantee this, but historically, you'll see some really aggressive sales and marketing stuff where they'll have great deals on these phones. So if you can go out there and get an S24 FE and get it for 500 bucks, let's say, in maybe a couple of months, that's going to be a fantastic phone that's going to be supported for a long time. And like I said, it'll be decent for photos. Like, it's okay. It's not the best, but it still takes decent photos. And you're going to have good, solid performance. You're going to get great long-term support and updates, AI, a beautiful screen, because Samsung puts good screens in basically everything. So it makes it very competitive. And I think that's going to help drive some of the market competition this fall, because you take a look at, like, the Pixels. Yeah, 799 is a tough sell, but like with the Pixel 8a. I thought it was overpriced. You can go anywhere. Well, I was in Target. You can get it for $399 now. Pixel 8a, fantastic phone for $399. And I would even maybe encourage people to buy that over the S24 FE. There's a lot of value in the Pixel 8a at $400. So we're finally getting a little bit of stratification in that mid-tier market where you get some options where you can kind of pick and choose like, all right, well, maybe I don't want the Corolla. I want the Honda Civic 
or maybe I don't want the uh, maybe I don't want the Ford Focus. Maybe I want like the Scion TC or whatever. Like we're we're getting some competition out there where it's not just like all right you pay a thousand or you pay 400 and there's nothing in the middle and i think samsung kind of slide it in there a little bit less than the competition and yeah it's a it's kind of like a good value flagship proposition so i don't know we'll see how it goes this year it's going to be out on october the third you can pre-order it now again i've got affiliate links in the description if you want to go that route and pick one up you can go that way get up to 400 dollars trading credit and i think it's pretty neat though with those other options that they have and it's got a 4,700 milliamp battery. So, I mean, it should last you all day, foreseeably. Like, it for, should foreseeably last you all day. So, that's all I got in this video. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, gripes, complaints, comments. Are you interested? Do you think that it has a place out there on the pecking order for phones this fall? Do you think that they've kind of learned their lessons and they've tailored the phone down a little bit? Or do you think it's a little bit too odd to go and spend your money on? Because, like I said... We went from the Snapdragon to now we're with the, you know, the tablets have a MediaTek and then the, we've got Exynos chipsets and some of the S24 phones. Like there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the silicon world when it comes to Samsung right now. And we'll see if that carries over into 2025, but that's all I got. I just wanted to go ahead and offer my two cents on it because people are looking to buy these things. People are looking to save money. I'm all about trying to sit one, save people money and let y'all know about the other options that are there other than like these eight, nine hundred thousand, twelve hundred, two thousand dollar phones, right? Uh, times are hard. Holiday season's coming around. You might need a new phone. You don't want to break the bank and this might be a good option. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions, comments, all that stuff, go to the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, if you found this helpful, of course, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.